Today on Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, we're talking about self-esteem in the digital age. Are you always checking your phone to see how many likes you have? Do you find yourself thinking about what to post on social media throughout the day? Have you felt yourself feeling depressed, anxious, or unworthy after spending some time perusing feeds? Learn how to recognize what social media is doing to your self-esteem as we continue our month focused on living life fully. Do you control your clutter or does your clutter control you? On Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, we'll teach you awareness as well as action steps to create change in your life. Come on, let's get started. If you don't have good self-esteem, social media is probably not a good place to hang out. You can create physical clutter because you might buy stuff to please others. You follow an influencer and they say, buy this product, so you want to run out and do that. Mentally, it can create anxiety, depression. Man, all these people have these amazing life. What do I have? It can create emotional clutter because you get upset easily. It gets you sidetracked on your spiritual life when you focus on others and not on yourself. How can you improve your life? It can keep you from your path or get you off your path. It can cause strain and stress in relationships. If you always have your nose buried in your phone or your iPad, that's not good for your relationship. Health, obviously, it can create clutter through lots of stress or anxiety and depression. And you can create financial clutter, again, if you're buying a bunch of stuff, especially celebrity endorsed products, because what they seem to sell seems to be super expensive. Today's episode was inspired by mean comments to me on both YouTube and podcast. And I was gonna have fun with this and read the really mean comments. Have you ever seen, I think they're really funny, Jimmy Kimmel has celebrity mean tweets, and they aren't actual tweets. I believe his writing staff writes them. And I, I couldn't do this because you can't do it because of copyright violation, but I would have had REM's Everybody Hurts playing in the background as I read it. And then I lost them. Well, it was really funny. This morning I found them. And I thought, because I had taken screenshots of the really bad ones, I just have to share this. So one of my favorites came from Canada. Canada, I thought y'all were nice. Anyway, so it was inspired by those comments and some of these comments I found through Chartable. This is the, you like me, you really like me. So there's this thing called Chartable for the podcast. I didn't sign up for it. I don't know if it's through Apple and I get a weekly update and it gives you a notice. I discovered this if you get a new review. I don't think it says, maybe it says if you had more, maybe if someone liked your podcast, but didn't review it. And it tells me where I am every week and I hate it. I usually just dump it. Occasionally I'll look at it. I don't want it to drive me. If it says, oh my gosh, this is your best podcast episode ever. I don't want to fall into the trap of, oh, I've got to create every single podcast episode like that, because that takes me out of my element. I sit down, I create a theme, I have a long list of like, oh, if I have an idea, I'll write it on my list. And I purposefully say, okay, this is what I want to do this month. Or for example, in August, it was a shorter month. Everything kind of came together with those Facebook lives. I was like, oh, this is a common thing. And I said, you know, this is a little different than what you do. And people might enjoy that. And, you know, people ask questions and that's really great because it's real people asking real questions. So anyway, Chartable, you can get caught up in, it's the same as likes and downloads and all that. And it drives me nuts. So on Canada iTunes, someone wrote me a really nasty review. Well, apparently it wasn't. And again, I feel I don't check into this, but I listen to my intuition and it's like, you have to read this. So I cracked up because their first stinky review wasn't mean enough. So they had to come back and write an even meaner review for me. And then 
again, listening to my intuition, I did a little searching and I'm not convinced they're from Canada based on some things I found Googling. And, you know, I definitely believe that I have people out there who probably produce a similar podcast or whatever. And I can see, I just, I'm listening to my gut on that and will do things to try to sabotage me. And I, you know, I don't have the time. My brother said, never worry about your competitors, even if they steal stuff, which I'm still not convinced on. He said, just do your thing and focus on you. But to me, it's a waste of time if you're going around and writing mean reviews on your competitors. I personally don't have time for that. Now, I'm going to be honest. I struggle. I have no problem if you have a well thought out response, a difference of opinion. You call me a name, you lose me. You don't have to be a jerky McJerk face. Analytics are all around you. Even if you're not in a small business like me, you have your likes or loves on Facebook, Instagram, retreating on Twitter. I heard all this stuff about TikTok. I'm not on TikTok. Although someone sent me a clip of a couple of people singing the chorus to Country Roads, which I love, one of my all-time favorite songs. I don't know if you have likes or retweets or how exactly that works, but you know what I'm talking about. Whatever social media platform on, I am bombarded by analytics, not just with the podcast on Chartable, but on Facebook, if I go to my page, I just ignore it. I'm like, I don't have time for this. It's too stressful. It tells me it's either weekly or day to day. You got stayed neutral and likes or more people like the page or less people like the page or 86 people look at this post, but only three had reaction. It can really drive you insane. And so as much as humanly possible, I try to stay a step back from that. Having said that, if you're in Canada and like the podcast, or if you're anywhere and like the podcast, I would love a kind review. It would help me feel a little bit better about some of the stinky ones that are out there. Again, there's no pressure. But that's just a perfect example of getting in business mode and saying, okay, oh no, I've got to correct this. So I try not to do that, but alas, I am not perfect. How does social media impact your self-esteem? Now, this was from a Huffington Post article in February of 2017. So my guess is numbers have only increased. That would, would what I think. 60% of people using social media reported it impacted their self-esteem in a negative way. 60%, that's crazy. 50% reported social media having negative effects on their relationship. I can completely see that and bet that number's higher. 80% reported that it's easier to be deceived by others through their sharing on social media. Absolutely. I mean, we've seen the whole controversy around Facebook and the inf misinformation that's been disseminated and, you know, Facebook hasn't stood up to that. So I think that we're talking about self-esteem today, but I definitely have concerns about what's being shared otherwise. I also found some interesting information from an article from Psychology Today online from November 2019 by Mark Travers, PhD, entitled Social Media is Harmful to Self-Esteem. So the researchers did a study and he read the study and, and took from it and wrote this article. So for people like you and me who don't have PhDs to understand, and if you have a PhD, please seek out the article or perhaps the research paper, because you'd probably enjoy reading that. It suggests that social media use likely causes more harm than good, and that higher levels of social network site use are associated with lower levels of self-esteem. So if you are working on increasing your self-esteem, pay attention. People who use a lot of social networking might be doing so at the expense of their in-person relationships, right? Their real life relationships instead of these fake ones that are online. And not everything is fake. I am in touch with people who don't live close by and I have a whole group of people I love in LA and social media is a way to connect with them. You know, the in-person meetings and Zoom and FaceTime and all that help it a lot more. Researchers in this study also found that people with lower self-esteem may be drawn to social media to avoid uncomfortable and awkward real-life experiences. Well, of course you can understand that. If you aren't comfortable that social media, you might be thinking to yourself, well, 
I'm a little shy. Let me start in social media and see how that goes. Low self-esteem may be more likely in social media sites in problematic ways, such as overusing the sites or engaging in negative social comparisons. I think that's the biggest thing I see. You know, I think I shared maybe in an episode at some point or on a blog post, I remember reading an article on this Instagram influencer, and I hate that influ that word, and I did a podcast episode called Why I'm Not an Influencer, and check it out if you're interested. And they spent all this time putting together the quote-unquote perfect shot. I was like, dang, I was exhausted reading this. I'm laughing. I, first of all, one of my goals in life is to get a picture of all five cats at once. Wish me luck. I'm laughing trying to imagine with getting a picture with even one of the cats or having a Christmas card picture of Tony and me be perfect. It's usually one when we're hiking or we've done a trip. That's usually I get one that's decent enough to send out. So I can't imagine spending hours. Now, again, if you're an influencer, it's probably your job. And if you're making buku bucks, but I don't think that's how it is for 95% of us. And so if you're not making an income from it, how much time? I mean, I see it all the time. Well, I used to. We don't go out anymore. But you'd see people angling to get that perfect picture of the food and all that. So that makes sense. And this is what I found really interesting. And when I first read it before reading the answer, I was shocked because I had the exact opposite. So they measured Asia, Australia, North America, and Europe. And they found the negative relationship between social media use and self-esteem to be the strongest in Australia. Good day, mates. What's up with that? And weakest in North America. And I would have completely flipped that. So I found that shocking. They also found that people who use multiple social networks were worse off than people who only used Facebook. And not surprisingly, people who exhibited Problematic social media use exhibited lowest self-esteem of all groups measured. So that's just some food from thought for people who know more about this than I do. Does the thought of clearing your clutter overwhelm you? Clear your clutter inside and out has 21 standalone chapters to fit your schedule and lifestyle. Stop being afraid gain clarity, and go at your own pace. The Clear Your Clutter Inside Not Workbook lets you record your thoughts step by step as you go through the book. Free MP3 meditation with purchase. Get control of your clutter so your clutter doesn't control you. Reclaim time, money, sanity, and resources. Learn more at reawakenyourbrilliance.com and also available for purchase on Amazon. So what else can social media do to your self-esteem? Well, it creates unrealistic standards. I have lipstick on because I'm doing a podcast YouTube video today. Do I wear lipstick every day? No. I'm in the South. There's even more pressure to look made up 24-7. That's not who I am. For me, that's an unrealistic standard to maintain. But I think of, I'm so grateful that I didn't grow up with social media. I think it would be really hard to be a kid today because you have all this pressure and you have all the awkwardness, especially of junior high and high school. And then now social media, you have all these things like, oh, look at what so-and-so is doing. Most of those standards, none of us can, or the majority of us can maintain. It also can uh, allow you to hide your imperfections. You might really need some support, but if you're constantly posting how great your life is on social media, people might not know that. You might not know how to reach out for help, and social media can have a negative impact with that. And I encourage you, if you are feeling a lot of stress, if you're upset, it's been going on for a while, please reach out to a friend, a family member. I know there are 800 numbers you can call. You'll have local community resources, please. There is no shame in asking for help. It can really feed your negativity. I have to be on social media for business. And 
there are times I thought, wow, as I look at some of these Facebook and Instagram posts, I should be farther along in my business. I should have a bestseller by now. I should have a bazillion views on YouTube. You don't always distinguish on social media what's real and what's the truth. Now I'm pretty much on my personal Facebook page. You know, the business is focused on giving you tips for decluttering and all that good stuff. I kind of keep it real. I'm on Facebook a lot less these days, but I kind of keep it real in sharing struggles or whatever. So I don't feel, well, I feel that I'm at least genuine, but I don't feel that that's the majority of times. I also think you can get extreme. Like I, people who just post their problems, I'm thinking in one person, but it's problem after problem after problem. And at that point you tune out, especially when people say, here are some suggestions to change and they don't do that and still complain. But what you're seeing is not always real or the true. So remember that. It's addictive. How much time are you spending each day? So on my iPad, it tells me my green time for the week. And so it'll say if you went up or if you went down. So I always try to be very aware of that and spend less time. And okay, can I beat the week before? Now, you know, when I'm at home with my mom, we go this next month, Tony will be coming up with me, but I'm by myself. And after a day of being physically and emotionally exhausted, physically and emotionally exhausted, I have no problem with scrolling through the news feed. It's just a way to relieve some pressure. But it absolutely can be addictive. How much time are you spending each day? I read somewhere also that they dole out on Instagram. So maybe five people like your post at once, but then they'll give you two and give you two later. It's like that adrenaline hit. They want to keep you on that. And finally, it can harm your self-esteem because it can cause loneliness. Envy, anxiety, depression, stress, and it can stunt your social skills. So all of that has a negative impact on your self-esteem. Self-esteem is something I continuously work on. I'm light years from where I was when I young, was younger, but it still, in my view, needs improvement. I'm working on it, though. And so because I'm working on it, I try to spend less time on social media because that doesn't help. When I see Elizabeth, what's her name? Is it Hurley? Who's the English actress who's older than I am and in a bikini? That doesn't make me feel good about myself. Now, is there some Photoshop going on? Yes. Does she have the money to do all these anti-aging treatments? Uh, absolutely. I'm sure she is. She's a chef, dietitian, blah, 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 blah. But I'm probably not going to be remembering that in the moment when I see an older woman in a bikini who looks way better than me. How can you navigate social media so it doesn't have such a negative impact on your self-esteem? First off, don't underestimate the role that it plays in your life. I just mentioned that example of Elizabeth Hurley in a bikini. It probably influences me at a deeper level than I can acknowledge. As I was talking, that example literally popped into my head. So apparently I've been holding on to it for a bit. Be really aware. What role does it play in your life? Are most of your friendships online? Then consider building in real life, as the kids say, relationship. If you are looking to get approval from people on social media, then maybe you need to take a step back and find a local group of people or people that you know and have a relationship or create that relationship so that you have more positivity in your life and aren't relying on the opinions and thoughts of strangers or people that you don't know very well. Be realistic about social media. I talked about the Instagrammer who spends hours on a shot and critical. I kind of laugh. I'm not really good at telling when something's been photoshopped, but I kind of crack up when people call out when women have photoshopped. And you think, is there that so much pressure on you? And you millions of people follow you and young girls follow you and you're photoshopping. I hold you accountable on that. I call you on that. You need to be aware of what you're telling others. 
especially young girls. So be critical. You see these things. I had someone, they showed how, I think he was a rapper, had photoshopped himself in front of a private plane to make like he was about to get on the plane, completely made up. So put on your thinking cap, put on your glasses, and use critical thinking skills as you scroll through your social media posts. Am I saying all the time? No. But I'm saying if you see a post of Elizabeth Hurley in a bikini, you say, hmm, well, she's probably had some work done. That's her choice. She probably gets facials every week. She probably has a chef, blah, 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 blah. And she's probably done some Photoshopping. So be realistic about it. And I don't know Elizabeth Hurley. Maybe she has amazing genes, but that's the other thing, people. I'm sorry. In your 50s, you get wrinkles. It's just you have wrinkles on your face. It's just a fact of life. Understand that it's okay to fail. I do this podcast. I share my life with you because I want you to see real life. Release the expectation and pressure that you have from social media. And I really hope that if you have kids or you have a child in your life, that you impart some of this wisdom or whatever feels right to you to them. We're going to make mistakes. We can't learn if we don't have mistakes. And social media has created this false expectation that we can't make mistakes. And that's so not true. Some of my mistakes, when I looked, they weren't mistakes. They guided me to the path I was meant to be on. I turned down a couple of marriage proposals before meeting Tony, and boy, am I grateful for that. I can't imagine my life with anyone else. So remember, you're perfectly imperfect. Take a break, take a break, take a break. Whether it's a day, a week, an hour, a month, I'll take it. Simply take a break. And that would be a good measurement for you how addicted am i to social media if you are crying because you've been away from your phone for two hours that means you know what we need to this needs to be something we need to really examine in our life so take a break let people know hey love you be off facebook for a month you me use this crazy old thing called the phone set yourself up for success and delete apps from your phone if you don't have Facebook app on your phone, you can't check it. That makes it a lot easier. And I have to tell you, when I'm done, I have a really interesting work schedule. It changes day to day and we aren't super early morning people and Tony works usually now till at least one. And so I'll work, 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 take a break. Then maybe I'll work in the evening. But once I'm done for the day, I am usually on the couch reading or I definitely read before bed at night. And if I don't have the app on my phone, I'm not going to walk. I'm too tired. I'm too lazy, quite frankly. I'm not going to walk to the computer to check Facebook. Just not happening. So set yourself up for success and delete the apps. Have boundaries around that. Put devices away. Just say, okay, I'm going to leave my iPad. I'm going to read a real book today. I'm not going to read on the Kindle. I'm going to grab something from my shelf and keep the iPad with the computer. I'm not going to allow the laptop into the bedroom. And you can also, as you set boundaries and set limits, I will spend no more than one hour on Facebook a day. I will not look at my notifications when out to dinner with my spouse. I really encourage you, if you Google it, you can probably find it. I saw it on uh, hashtag ironic social media, but someone had taken pictures of people and then they had, I think maybe they took it out or maybe they just had them pretend. But so you see a couple out to dinner and both are looking down at their hands where their phone would be. And they did a series of these shots and it's really powerful. At least for me, it made me sit back and say, wow, maybe I need to check in with my use. Another thing, turn off notification. Now, I suggested to a client the other day, if you've got a meeting, set a reminder 15 minutes before, but that's a meeting. Don't have a ding, ping, woo-woo, or whatever they do when someone has liked or responded to a post. If you don't have notifications, again, that's like that Pelovian response. Oh, I got to respond, got to answer. 
So turn those off. Take actions from today's podcast. Examine how social media impacts your self-esteem. Track the number of hours you spend on social media. Notice how you feel after spending time on various platforms. Be critical and realistic of social media and what others are sharing. Understand you're perfectly imperfect. Take a break from posting, sharing, liking. Be aware of how you feel when taking a break from social media. Set boundaries and limits moving forward. Create a healthy relationship with social media. On our next episode, we're talking about the Pledge of Allegiance. Go out. Clear your clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. When you clear your clutter, you can share your gifts with the world. Sign up for our free newsletter at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. If you've enjoyed Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, please rate, review, and share us.